Mark Marquez says take it straight back at turn number 10. Will Rossi cut back to the inside at turn number 11? You buddy, Will Rossi up the inside. This is unbelievable action. Big moment for Rossi on the front end. He lost the front of that Yamaha. Left foot off the foot red. Marquez back. Gone are the days when we had to modify our superbikes just to feel like what our motor stars ride. The thrilling oven blurs the line between daily rides and track. A showcase of Yamaha's technology leadership, the R1 raises the bar with its uncompromised performance and handling all put together in one seamless and relentless, gut-wrenchingly powerful package on two wheels with the most advanced active electronics, cutting edge suspension and more to offer for everyone. Yamaha's motorcycle industry was co-founded by Keiichi Kawakami, the mastermind of the Yamaha's Motorcycle Corporation. The first bike they ever released was the YA125cc1. Later on, Yamaha's spirit for the inline force segment grew much larger and they started building 750ccs, dual cylinder, inline force and a lot of bikes. One such production motorcycle changed the entire facelift of the Yamaha's motorcycle industry. During the late 1990s, the 900cc segment was at the peak. This was the time when the ZX9Rs and the Hondas ushered in so fast that Yamaha had to do something to cope up with leading segment. That's when in 1998, the Yamaha's R1 was released. The first inline four with a dual disc brake setup, which had the weight ratio of a 600cc, but had 150 horsepower, which was the best in class and was absolutely ballistic and had a twitchy throttle, which had a lot of deaths at that time. But the people absolutely loved it with the white and red paint scheme which totally dethroned every single competitor out there. 1998 was the first generation Yamaha R1 which was tweaked a lot. Later in 2002 they had to do another change to that which they had to do again in 2006 and later 2008 because it was very lackluster and was uninspiring to ride in the lower rest but had a lot of punch in the higher rest. But then 2009 they bought in MotoGP Dirac technology all the way from the Yamaha's M1 with the crossplane crankshaft firing with the order of 1324 for the cylinders which creates a revolution for every 270 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees and 360 degrees respectively which gave a lot of renewal response throughout the power band. After a lot of success with the crossplane crankshaft called as the Big Bang engine, a lot of the European competitors started to catch up and they totally dethroned the Yamaha yet again. With the BMW S1000RR, the Aprilia's RSV4 and the Ducati's Panigale series totally catching up and making it impossible for Yamaha to catch up with the new generation. Yamaha had to do something and really fast, otherwise their sales were going pretty low at that time. 2014, they made another change where they just increased the height of the rear foot pegs, they included a new nose, they introduced traction control system and ABS and that's all. But the game changing moment was in 2015 when they absolutely took every single bit of the riders input from the MotoGP riders, our dear favorite, Valentino Rossi, VR46, the doctor, and made this monstrosity of a bike straight from the shores of MotoGP. The best part about this is, it is the same heritage as the old R1 with 200 PS of power, just 199 kilos, and one of the best in class power delivery anyone can ever have. Well, this is the stonking and brand new Yamaha R1 for you all. The best part about this is it's totally aerodynamic. Every bit of it has been designed in a wind tunnel with 200 plus catches and a lot, lot of design going through this. Every bit of this is sculpted to go as fast as you can on the racetrack. From the seat height to 855 mm, to the massive 17 liter fuel tank, 
and this bike is loaded with every single electronics package you can ever expect. Funny though, as the gentleman's agreement only lasted for 20 years, I would say, starting from 2000 and it's already 2020 and no one really follows the 186 miles per hour or the 300, which is exactly 299 kilometers per hour mark. These bikes can now go way above that and even though they are electronically limited to that, GPS verified, these can go much faster. The riding position is absolutely brutal on our spine and will have us getting checked for slip discs if you're not used to it. The seat is flatter, roomier and the fuel tank is narrower with cutouts for your knees to help you get locked in. Thankfully, the fashion for tiny low screens is a thing of the past and the new R1 has a decent bubble to tuck under, just like a proper race bike. Focusing primarily on the track aspect of superbike riding, with the street riding a definite second. Yamaha's new R1 redefined the modern superbike. This is the first superbike to come with the proprietary Yamaha inertial measurement unit, the IMU, which uses six axes of measurement that calculates roll, pitch, lean and yaw at 125 calculations a second. And we also get the first production slide control system, lean angle sensitive traction control, wheelie control, launch control, a quick shifter and so much more. The new short stroke higher compression inline 4 crosswind crank makes 200 bhp with ram air intake at 13,500 rpm and churns out 112.4 Nm of torque at 11,500 rpm. This clever engine has the easy, wide free flexibility of an electric motor with one of the best on and off throttle transitions, mated to the kind of ballistic top end you can only really exploit fully on track. It has a new cylinder head with reshaped intake ports, titanium condors and exhaust, lightweight force pistons with diamond-like carbon DLC pins, bigger valves with a DLC rocker valve train, a 24% larger airbox and a new lightweight assist slipper clutch. The advanced aluminium delta box frame uses the engine as a stress member of the chassis and is designed to provide optimal longitudinal, lateral and torsional rigidity balance. With such mighty power comes a mighty responsibility of taming it and is handled by 43mm KYB fully adjustable inverted forks up front with 119mm of travel and KYB piggyback shock with 4-way adjustable suspension at the rear. Personally, I absolutely love the way it handled dry tarmac and found the suspension a tad on the softer side for track usage. But you can feel every nanometer of gravel and that's the commitment of a race bred superbike with the right settings it will devastate your track days with you urging to push more and more every lap. The dual 320mm disc with 4 piston calipers anchor the front end like an alligator's jaw and the rear comes with a single 220mm setup with ABS as standard. I must say, one finger and it hurts. Two fingers and you'll be praying not to fall off the bike as the bike is that tremendous. I'll wait a bit progressive. However, it's prone to bake fade and I personally love the initial fight the Brembo setups have to offer. The machine is however smaller, more compact and feels like an R6 making it ultra flickable around the corners and straights as well. The reason why Yamaha chose to update the R1 for the 8th time was to absolutely crush the Europeans even in the electronics department. And the new R1 leaves no room for compromise as the new wheelie control lets the front float out of corners with stunning precision. It's far better than the unpredictable systems on the competition. The new up and down quick shift mechanism works well but you need to be careful not to overwork the system on the downshift. It's fully equipped with banking sensitive traction control and unified ABS as well as light control, launch control and yeah, so much more. The rear tyres and the front are paired with Pirelli Supercosa SP tyres which are 200 section and 120 section up front. The whole bike is now all LED and no more halogens and if you just closely look at this, there is absolutely no hint of them trying to make this look beautiful or useful. It is just meant only to go as fast as you can, as you can see the hollow scoops even the tail light section. This with the non-rigid rear part is not really meant for a pillion to sit and is a restricted single-seater bike only and I wouldn't really recommend this for any other bike. It's 
not the smooth, cuddly R1 of old. It's an unshamedly aggressive, angry, race-focused superbike. It's lost some of its low-end grunt, but has been replaced by a top-end punch so brutal it's hard to hold on to it in full attack mode. There are some golden moments when the R1 is the most perfect, magical motorcycle ever. Its speed and stability into fast sweeping corners, device belief and its crushing MotoGP acceleration ably contained by some of the best electronics in the business. Not only is it otherworldly rapid, it's knee tremblingly sexy too. Total response from fully close to let's bid Elon Musk a high at SpaceX is almost seamless <laughs> as the R1 builds speed so effortlessly, I must say. For the rest of the time, the R1 is brutally uncomfortable and its limit is so far removed in the real world, blistering into the holy grail of 299 km per hour. That's a modern day superbike in a nutshell. Epic in small doses. I hate to say it, slightly pointless the rest of the time. So much that it feels like using a chainsaw instead of a regular shaving blade. Coming at over 25 lakhs on road, this bike is one of the most premium segment Japanese superbikes Yamaha has to offer. The race ready hearts in us. I could keep on going forever, but a journey with the beautiful ballistic R1 ends here. Uh, I sincerely thank the Ali Vlogs. Links are in the description for letting me review this wonderful beast of a machine which is highly inaccessible to a lot of people because of the high maintenance costs and a lot of things which get lost during the purchase of this bike. Truly, this is one of a kind. Get that Yamaha, get that Narcos.